General Atomics is very excited to be here at the Dubai Air Show. This is the first time we're bringing what you see behind me, which is the next generation of air dominance, the collaborative combat aircraft. So it's the first time here. We're actually going to do a tour through the Middle East. The interest we're hearing about collaborative combat aircraft is that it brings a mass to the fight and it brings it now. So if you want air superiority and you don't want to wait 10 years and you want it now, it's built a lot of quantities of what you see behind me here and it brings mass to the fight, it's affordable, and it can dominate the enemy by swarming with multiple aircraft talking to each other and uh, very formidable against threats. So in the Middle East, we're seeing an uh, interest in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. And so we are uh, pursuing that quite heavily, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing this tour here um, with this full-scale model that you see behind me. For the YFQ-42A program, we're currently under contract with the U.S. Air Force, and we're, we're in the middle of development, and in parallel with that, we are ramping up into full-rate production. We've flown our first two aircraft to date. Uh, tail 3, 4, 5, they're coming right behind it, and it's going into full-rate production, and uh, by the end of uh, next year, we'll be punching these things out. If you think about our Gambit series, what it is in a very adaptable uh, aircraft series that takes a common core and applies it to various missions. So what you see behind me, the YFQ-42A is really a, a series out of the Gambit aircraft. So it can be missionized for the customer's needs. What the Gambit series allows us to do is to lean forward into the production line, so forecast if you will, so we can get the production line moving and then as customers' requirements change, at the end of the production line we can add on the kits that make the mission for them. So a big part of the Gambit series is having full autonomy once you get into the mission, meaning you have man on the loop, not man in the loop. To speed up the autonomy development, we have been using a surrogate at our MQ-20 platform for many, many exercises now. We've been doing that for about five years. We, originally, we called it the Skyboard program. That's been done on internal research and development. So what we've done recently is uh, we have flown the MQ-20 as a surrogate of the airplane that you see behind me and actually controlled the aircraft, put it into autonomy from an F-22 platform. To accomplish this uh, uh, control of, from the F-22, we, had, we obviously had partners with, with Lockheed and L-3 Harris to accomplish the data links and provide the platform. Great partnership with those two companies to make this happen. And what that's doing is to showing the uh, Air Force that uh, this is you know, seen as believing and it's being done now so we can speed up the program. To accomplish the control from the F-22, it, it requires uh, integration of some new uh, components, obviously. There's a data link, line of sight data link between the two aircraft, between our MQ-20 and, and the F-22, and also a tablet on the pilot's knee. So the pilot can grab the airplane from flying in semi-autonomous mode into autonomy. And that's man on the loop once you get to that point. And that's really the whole goal of this program, is to link up like a loyal wingman, take this airplane into full autonomy mode and stand back and watch them do their thing. I don't want to sound uh, too smug, but General Atomics Aeronautical System is the best unmanned aircraft company in the world and we can prove it through our record. We've been around for more than 30 years. We focus on unmanned aircraft systems. We've delivered 1,300 aircraft to date, 9 million flight hours. We're deployed to 80 locations around the world as we speak. Nobody else performs anything like that. Every second of every day, there's 70 aircraft flying above us. 